So the first job in maintenance is to remove the Golfskate Caddy wheel from the Golfskate Caddy drive wheel. This is a very, very simple procedure and requires just a few simple tools, a 19 mil socket, three mil Allen key, and we're ready to go. So the first job, remove the nut. Just by hitting the bottom of the tire to lift it off the belt. Changing a tire is a fairly simple procedure and just requires a methodical approach. You will need a 10 mil socket set, a 12 mil spanner and a six mil Allen key. Assuming that you have a puncture, you will not need to let the air out of the tire. Assuming you just need to change a tire which has now become bald, you must ensure firstly that the air is removed. Once you have removed the air, simply start to remove three nuts on the back, in this case of the drive wheel. There is no difference between the drive wheel and the non-drive wheel other than this cog. Everything else remains the same. The next job is to remove the nuts and the Allen key to separate the rim. Once you have removed all of the nuts and bolts and washers, it's simply a matter of pulling the components apart. You may find sometimes they could become a little bit sticky, so you may need to just pull a little bit more just to separate all the components. Ensure that if you're changing a tire because of wear, that all the air has been removed from the inner tube and replace with a new either inner tube or tire accordingly. When you have a brand new inner tube, it will come looking like this, very flat. And it is a good idea to use a bicycle pump just to put a little bit of pressure into the uh, inner tube. By inflating a very small amount of air inside the inner tube, it will mitigate the chances of the inner tube pinching against the two sides, causing a uh, premature failure. Locate the space for the valve, place that over, ensure that the reverse and all the holes match up, as we can see, and proceed to place all the nuts and bolts back together again. Once everything has been tightened up and you are happy with everything, it's simply a case of just attaching the main drive cog using those three bolts that we took off earlier. It is most important to ensure that you do not over tighten any of the nuts. The use of ratchet guns should only be used by experienced personnel who can gauge the tension of the nut on the seat. Reinflation should be around 40 to 50 PSI as per the tyre specs. We use a special compressor here. We do not recommend the use of a garage or servo style compressor which can place too much air into the tyre and cause it to be damaged or even explode. We suggest you use a bicycle pump or a foot pump to attain the correct air pressure. The second job is to remove the belt to replace the drive belt. Very straightforward. With your three millimeter Allen key, to simply remove the belt. Check for wear and tear and inspect that the belt is not damaged. Give the casing a little clean just to remove any dust or fine particles that may have entered. After inspection, belt replacement is very straightforward. Place the belt over the small cog. Replace the cover, ensuring you do not over tighten. Replacing the tire is something that requires just a little bit of a knack it is not complicated. You are trying to fit the belt over the drive cog here. And the easiest way to do that, simply locate 
the axle pin. You may need to just line up inside and you will see the axle starting to show through the wheel here. The trick with putting the tire on properly is that you place over the belt and place a little bit of forward and reverse pressure. You're trying to locate the teeth inside that belt. When you feel them, you'll feel them click. You should hear that kind of noise, which indicates now that the wheel is seated inside the belt on the axle in the correct position. Final tightening should be done, but again, ensuring that the nut is not over tightened, pushing down against the bearing. They're nylock nuts, and all they require is just a little bit to catch on, and we're not about over tightening anything.